Hello and welcome to this Microsoft Excel video tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show us how to create inner join in Excel. So let's dive in. In the previous video, we learned how to create the inner join using the Microsoft SQL Server Azure Data Studio, and we have imported the same data set into Excel which is the AdventureWorks 2019 database. By the way, I'm going to put the link of the last video in the description box below so that if you have Microsoft SQL installed on your machine, you can try it out. Or if you have Excel, you can try the same thing out. Now, the goal of this video is to achieve the same result in Excel and also in Microsoft SQL Server, which we have done yesterday. So let's proceed. By the way, if you are a new person in this channel or you are a returning person, you can please consider subscribing to the channel and turn on the bell icon to get notification of new videos. So we have the same data set from the Microsoft SQL Server and let's achieve the same outcome. Now, based on our data set, we have the business entity ID, name, address, and the phone number columns. Now, in the second table, we have the number of employees, name, bank name, specialty, and business entity ID. Now, this table has officially been stored as an Excel table. So in the table design, I have given demographics as the table name. So I need to do the same thing for this table. So control T or control L. So we have the create table dialog box and we need to just go ahead and click OK because our table indeed has headers. So click OK. And then we need to rename this and call this contacts. So contact and click enter on the keyboard after we've done that we need to get the two tables into the power query editor match queries so to do that come to the data tab of the ribbon and under the get and transform data group you can click on from table forward slash range or from the data set you can right click and choose get data from table forward slash range they work the same magic we have the contact table loaded into the power query editor so what we're going to do is to go ahead and close and load to and create a connection in order to be able to get a second table into the power query so in the home tab of the ribbon we want to close and load to then in the import data wizard we have options to dump in the table pivot table report pivot chart or only create a connection so we are fine with only create connection so click ok and then we can see the queries and connections tax pin and then we can see the query here so let's go to the second table and right click and choose get data from table for slash ring now we have the demographics table also loaded into the power query editor and we have two queries now we can go ahead and match the query so there are two ways of doing that quickly you can do that from the home tab under the combined group we have the match queries and you can match queries as new or you come to this space and right click and choose new query combine query and match queries as new they work the same thing now in the match query dialog box we can select the tables and the matching columns to create a matched table. So we have the two tables here. So we can choose any one of them. Let's go with the contact. And then from the second option here, we can choose the demographics table. Now we can choose the columns that matches or that is present in both tables. Now we know that the business entity ID is present in both tables. So also the name column it is present in both table so we go ahead and choose business entity id and since we have more than one column i'm going to hold down my shift key and select name so we have one and two and that's going to be the order of execution this is going to be business entity then we match the same business entity here but you can discover from the demographics table that the name is not adjacent column so it is a non-contiguous one thereafter 
what I'm going to do is to hold down my control key so as to select the non adjacent name column so we can see one and two so the order of execution will be business entity id one and business entity id one then we come to the name two and name two so after we have done that we can go ahead and specify the join kind so i come to this drop down and choose inner that is only matching rows and then we can see the selection matches 753 of 753 rows from the first table and then 701 or 701 from the second table so we can go ahead and click ok and beautifully we have the matched table okay that match the rows now what we're going to do is very simple we can see this two upward pointed arrows now i need all these columns you know to be present in the final table and i also need some couple of columns from the other table so i click on expand original column name as prefix so uncheck that and then i'm going to uncheck all of them now i only need some specific columns that are not present in the columns you can see for now so i need the bank name and the specialty and of course the number employees column all right that's very important but i'm going to skip the name the business entity because they are already available in the result we have here so click ok and then we can scroll to the right and see the other three columns that is coming from the second table so name employee number employee bank name and specialty and of course the data types has been assigned accurately but you can always verify to be sure everything is intact all right we can give a meaningful name to our matched query so let me call this one um, results you can call it whatever you want click enter and then we can close and load to again we do not want to just close and load to a table because we do not want to dump all the three queries we only need the result query so in the import data wizard for the final time we're going to create only create connection and click ok and then we have the three queries and finally we can right click and choose load to and they want to load to a table and then we want to choose a new worksheet because this place is a bit not spacious so click ok and bam we have the final results so we can see all the columns business entity id name email address phone number number employee bank name and specialty so let's verify how many number of rows we have now in the status bar we can see seven five three count of rows now let's swipe over to the azure data studio and verify so in the azure data studio we have the same query that we have used the select statement and the inner join and the some keywords and if you check this section we can see seven five three rows and that is exactly what we achieve in excel 753 so whether you're using excel or microsoft sql or even my sql and other technologies you can achieve the same result across the different platforms so i hope you enjoyed this video if you do you can like comment share and consider subscribing to the channel thank you and bye for now cheers